When you mark the ballot in next month's provincial election, you'll also have a chance to change the way we elect our representatives at Queen's Park. A referendum will be on the ballot asking you to vote yes or no to mixed member proportional voting. Under the proposed system, the number of seats in the legislature would swell from 107 to 129. Ninety politicians would be elected in enlarged ridings across the province using the current system, while another 39 would be appointed from a public list of candidates, according to the percentage of popular vote the parties received. The mixed member system means traditional fringe parties that get more than 3% of the popular vote, but not enough in any one riding to elect a candidate, would have a better chance of having at least one seat in the legislature. Is it democracy at its best or at best a consolation prize for political parties who can't get elected? Steve Withers speaks on behalf of the mixed member proportional voting campaign. He's in Toronto, while Toronto Sun columnist Sheila Copps has added her voice to the no side. She's in Ottawa. Steve, let's begin with you. Many people say that our democratic system ain't broke, so why are we trying to fix it? Well, it's, uh, there are a lot of problems with the current system. Uh, you go down there to vote in your local riding, you've got one vote for one candidate in one riding, and most of the time that vote doesn't elect anybody. Just look at the numbers. More than half of those votes don't elect anybody at all. And of course that vote has no effect whatever in the other 106 ridings. I call that the pea shooter vote. Short range, low accuracy. Now MMP lets you keep your pea shooter vote and you get your one vote for your one candidate and your one riding. But on top of that, in addition to it, plus you get to vote for a party. Now the party is the, whatever party you want. And as long as it gets more than 3% of the vote, you will, you will elect MPPs for that party. That's something you can't do today. That vote is also your direct vote on the leadership of that party if you want to see it that way. You can hold the entire party to account across the entire province. That's something you can't do today. The MMP lets you vote separately for your local representative and the party you prefer. It's better. I've lived it under MMP in New Zealand for the last 11 years. I campaigned for it down there. People were fear-mongering about it before it came in and all the fears have proven absolutely groundless. It's absolutely wonderful and Ontarians would be crazy not to go for it. I have a question though. The 39 people who could be elected from that list. I'm are... glad you used that word elected. That's an important word to use. Well, that's what I want you to clarify though. Yeah. If you, if they are, well, they're appointed from the party, right? Because the list is put forward before the election. Is that how it works? Or explain no, that's that, not how, part. that No, well, that's not how it works at all. In every country that uses MMP, we're talking Scotland, Wales, Germany, New Zealand, the list's people are candidates okay. just like the local candidates and they are democratically chosen by their party members. Mm -hmm. I have been a member of my party in New Zealand and I've gone along to my local riding meeting and we have chosen not only the local riding candidate, we have also voted for the six people from the party defines in our region to go to the party list. Okay. They are democratically chosen. There's absolutely not a single example anywhere in the world that MMP is used where the party bosses pick the candidates. Sheila. It's not a real argument. Well, it, I, never, it doesn't I, happen. I think it's a very good argument because if you read the brochure that elections... But it doesn't, it doesn't happen though. All right, hang on, if, you read, if you read the brochure that Elections Ontario has sent around, there is no specification as to how the people are chosen. The only requirement in the proposed referendum is that parties inform the public as to how they were chosen. So there is nothing in the law that says that there is an election, but let's say there is an election and I mean I had a very great riding association and there are a few hundred people who come out to a meeting what you're saying is the election is a few hundred people who choose the people who are on the list who are then put into a general election to be voted on and if you get three percent of the vote you end up with a member in parliament based on three percent of the population voting for them I can't see how taking no. direct votes and seats right now and replacing them with a list that is proposed by parties is more democratic than allowing the people to have all of the votes in uh, Parliament. Well, well, hang on a minute, though. Your, your local MP today, the average local MP is elected with 21,500 votes. For a party to get 3% of the vote, they have to get between 150 and 200,000 votes. Those are real votes. People across want the, those people across elected. Across the province. Across and and, the and province. You, you, spoke about, you spoke about examples. The Israeli Knesset is one very good example where oh, that's 1. only but that's only one country. Well, okay, yeah, but it's one country out of 80 that use proportional 1. representation. 1.5% of the vote. Yeah. They end up in a minority situation quite often with the fringes determining who actually uh, dictates the rules of parliament and uh I think that the larger picture, I, I don't disagree that we could change the current system. Why not use the French system? In the French system, there's a direct vote one, one week, 
everybody's knocked off except the top two candidates and then the next week they vote for the top two candidates so it's the direct vote of the people deciding who the member of parliament is in this system you're basically no, no, taking look, look, seats no. from mem from members of the public and giving them to political parties and 25 percent of the parliamentary seats are going to be occupied by people who were chosen from party lists and that is not Steve, democracy. I have a question about yeah, that. Hang Steve, on. Hang on. Just, no. but just in response to that though, the, 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 there are different kinds of proportional representation and the only kind that's relevant for what we're talking about in Ontario is mixed member proportional where either half or some portion of the members are elected locally and the rest are used to top each party up to its share of the vote. The sort of thing that Sheila is describing doesn't happen in countries with mixed member proportional. Okay. I have a question for you, Steve. In the, under the system, the people who are appointed uh, on they're this not, list... I'm sorry, they're not appointed. Well, they're how do they get... The list. How, how do they who? get on the list? How do they get on how the list? How do they get on the list? Okay, right now in Ontario, this is this is exactly what happened in New Zealand in 1993. Before the referendum, we challenged every party to say, "Hey, how will you select your candidates?" And they all said, "Hey, we're going to do it democratically because why would anybody vote for us if we didn't? Why would our party well, activists that? what now, why would our party activists door knock and raise money for us if we shut them out of these processes?" There's only two okay, things a political party does. Okay, but how is it happening? How is it happening? Well, okay, well, different parties do it differently. The Conservative Party, the National Party in New Zealand, for example, and this is true of the Conservatives in Scotland, they go along and they have their local riding meeting, just like the Liberals and the Conservatives do here in Ontario, and they choose the local candidate. Now, all those local candidates go onto their list. But they're within so the party. So that everybody, everybody's been democratically chosen by within party members. Within a party, but my concern is, what if a person is part of the list, becomes part of Parliament, the Canadian public has never elected this person and it's just right. the party no, and we don't on, want them no, in no, there. No, How no, do you no, get no, rid wait, of them? Wait. You voted for the party. You voted for the team. The party vote is the team vote. When you go down to the, uh, the, the, the Jays stadium there, do you go, go second base man? No, you don't. You say, go Blue Jays. Okay? The reality is that the public... The reality is that Okay, there is no reality in what you're saying because no, no, the reality is that there is no... The party vote is the one that actually gives you no, the chance you to can't, vote for people all across Ontario. That you is cannot something explain you can't right do now. I, you cannot explain right now how any party is going to choose and rank the members on their list. I can, I and can so what you're doing it, is you're I giving to 25 percent. No, well, no, I, I, no, no, no. I've you can't explain explained. it because right, it's, it's not written it. in the law. Sorry, okay, folks, we're out of time. Steve, Steve I'm sorry. Steve, I'm sorry. We're out of time. We've run out of time. But an excellent expert. At first, I thought we were talking about the Canadian Idol voting here. Most interesting, and I'm sure we'll hear more about. Um, mixed member proportional um, uh, voting. Thank you so much to Steve Withers, uh, the Kiwi, and to Sheila Copps, the Canadian. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.